Hey, what's up, brother? On this video, I'm gonna spend a few minutes teaching you the exact weightlifting method that I use and that I use for all of my clients to build muscle in the fastest and most efficient way possible. The name of this method is called the reverse pyramid. And so before I go into it, let me explain the two methods that most people use when they lift. The first is called the pyramid. And so what they'll do is they'll go in and they'll sit down on a bench or whatever exercise they're doing, typically their compound lifts, and they'll start at a low weight that they're comfortable with, maybe 50% effort, and they'll incrementally increase until they hit what they call a top set. So for somebody who does bench press and they're pretty strong, that pyramid may look something like 15 for 135, 12 at 225, 10 at 315, maybe six or eight at 365. And then they finally reach their top set at maybe 405 for five or six reps. And then depending upon how they feel, they may go back down the pyramid. So from 405 back down to 365, then 315, then 225 and so on. So that's typical pyramid style. This is very common. You see this all the time. A lot of guys really love this because the warm up is kind of built into it. It gives them that ego boost that they're looking for because they're lifting that heavy weight during every training session. The second way that people do it is they'll go in and let's say as an example, their program calls for three sets of 10. So what they'll do is they'll put a weight on there 70 or 80 percent. Let's say 275, do it for 10. They'll rest for two minutes, they'll do it for 10 again, and then they'll do the same amount of weight a third time for 10 reps. These are the two things that I see that are most common as a coach, and here's why those methods are less effective. The pyramid, yes, the warm-up is built into it, but you find yourself in a position where two things happen. Number one is you're not gonna get stronger and bigger by trying to max out every week. It's just not gonna happen. You have to be willing to set that aside and put yourself into a position where you follow a structured regimen that isn't focused upon how much weight you can put up on the bar. Even a powerlifting type of program isn't gonna peak at 95% of your max until typically like week four out from your competition. Most of the time when you're powerlifting, you're doing low volume work, four or five sets with your compound movements, and you're doing somewhere between 60 and 90% of your max with long rest periods and much less training density. Where with a bodybuilding style program, you're gonna find yourself in a place where you're doing much more lower weight high volume type work where your rep ranges are somewhere eight plus. Six is the lowest for bodybuilding. So the pyramid style of training was really invented by guys who are ego lifting, right? Because their goal in there is to see how much they can lift. And that's the metric that they're using to measure their progress. But they typically say that their goal is to get bigger. And so when you have a misalignment between your goal and the metric you use to measure progress towards that goal, it creates a big problem and it makes it hard for you to see progress for the long term. So that's why the pyramid is inferior. And the second method, we'll just say the same weight for all three sets. The reason that's inferior is because you maybe challenged yourself on the third set. If I put 275 on the bar and I lift it 10 reps and then I put it on the bar again and I lift it 10 reps and maybe it started to get a little bit hard. And then for the third set, that's when I was actually challenged and it was a struggle for me to get that bar up on the 10th rep. That third set was really the only one where I made any progress. And so the first two sets were warm up sets and you fatigued yourself. And then the third set was actually your working set. And so let me explain to you what I do. And so just a second ago, you heard me mention warm-up sets and working sets, okay? It's really, really important that with this method, the reverse pyramid, you always warm up because frankly, we're gonna get right into the training. So you need to make sure you're warmed up. What does that mean for me? Typically what I'll do is I'll do four to five sets at 
50 to 70% of my max for five to 15 reps. Depending on what the program, depending upon how I feel, depending upon how my joints feel, my goal is I want to make sure that I'm really getting the blood flowing and I'm in a place where I'm not cold. Okay. So do those warm up sets. Like I said, usually for me, I'll do about sometimes five warm up sets, depending upon how I feel. This is all just based upon what you're comfortable with. Then once you're done with your warm up, you go into what we call our working sets. And so if I have a program, again, we're going to use bench press as the example, where I program you four sets of bench press at six to eight reps. What I'm doing is I'm giving you an upper and a lower threshold. So this is my thought process as I go through this. On my first set, the question I ask myself is, if my rep target is from six to eight reps, how much weight do I need to have on this bar so that I can reach failure at eight reps? Based upon my knowledge of my strength and kind of where I'm at my progress, I should be able to tell pretty closely what that is. So what do I do? Whatever that eight rep max is at that moment in time, I'll put it on the bar. And I finish that set. I get the eight rep up and I'm like, oh, that was a struggle, but I hit it. I got the eighth rep. I wait my 90 seconds or whatever my rest period is. Once that rest period is over, the next question that I have is, now that I'm fatigued and I just hit this for eight, can I hit this for at least six? If I feel confident that I can still hit that weight for at least six reps, then I'm gonna leave the weight on the bar. And so we go into set two, I keep the same weight on the bar, I put it up and I hit it for six. That's my max, I can't do seven. Okay, cool, I wait my 90 seconds. Now, I know that because I hit the weight for eight and then I went down and I hit it for six, there's really no way that I'm gonna be able to hit it for six again, maybe, but I ask myself, can I hit this for at least six? If the answer is no, okay, cool. What do I need to lower the weight to so that I can fail at eight again? And so if you're at 275, maybe that number is 255 for you. So you load 255 on the bar, you do your set, and you're only able to hit seven, no problem. You wait your 90 seconds, and then on the last set, you ask yourself, can I hit that 255 again for at least six? If the answer is no, no problem. Drop it down to 245, do your last set. So what that looks like is you're doing this. So here's the way that we progress and how we build progressive overload into it. You remember the first set? We had our weight on there and we were able to hit it for eight. Well, what does that mean? That means next week or next time I go back to do that same exercise again, I bump up by five or 10 pounds. So instead of 275, maybe I'll put 285 on there. Now, I'm probably gonna put myself in a position where that first set, I can only do six or seven, maybe five, I don't know. And now what I do is every week, I keep doing that same amount until I get to the upper range, eight. And once I can hit that for eight, on my first set, that's my indication that I need to go up the following week, 295, whatever. And so we continue to follow that pathway. Let's say two weeks later, I go up to 295, I'm able to hit it for six. Now I know on set two, I need to drop down to 285 or 75 to see if I can stay within that six to eight. And we keep progressing through that downward reverse pyramid. And so what this method does is two things. The first thing, like I mentioned, is it has progressive overload built into it. Whenever I'm able to lift the weight for eight reps or whatever that upper range is for my first set, that's how I know it's time for me to go up. So no matter what happens, as long as I'm tracking my numbers, I always have progressive overload built into my program. The second thing is it helps me to ensure that I'm always training on every set close to failure. The way to maximize hypertrophy is to reach close to failure on as many sets as possible during your training. Now, the one thing I wanna caveat about the reverse pyramid method, this is a high intensity style of training, which means that if you try to build it into the way that most coaches program, you're gonna struggle. And the reason for that is because if you train this way, you only need maybe 20 sets at most of 
a certain muscle in order to build on a week to week basis. So for me, 20 sets is like, again, the upper way higher. Sometimes for my workouts, I'll only do like eight to 12 sets of a single muscle and still see phenomenal progress. But studies have shown about 20 is kind of that sweet spot. And so what that means is if I'm going in there and I'm doing four sets per exercise, that's only five exercises. If you're just doing a chest day, let's say it's a bro split, you'll do flat, incline, either dumbbell or barbell. You'll do some form of fly. You'll do cable work. And then you'll probably finish out with some machine style training like machine flies or hammer strength or something like that. And that's it. Most programs have eight, nine, 10 different exercises built into them with a much more volume. And so if you try to apply the reverse pyramid style of training to a program like that has a higher set count, you're going to struggle and you're going to find yourself in a place where you could potentially overtrain the muscle if you're under eating on the other end. And frankly, the only time that you can really overtrain is if you're under eating or not sleeping enough for the average person. But understand, like when you start to get into the fifth, sixth, seventh exercise of training with this method, you're going to be pretty exhausted. So again, the format of this style of training is called the reverse pyramid. It's been something I've been using for years and teaching my clients to use. It requires an extreme amount of discipline to stay consistent with. But what I've found is it works really well and it's effective. But one of the things that it's given me the ability to do is greatly reduce the amount of time I spend in the gym and still be able to see the same, if not better results over the long term. So it's easier on my joints the high intensity style is, is a better fit for me because I can get in there, get my training done, lift hard, lift heavy, get out, and I'm not wasting any time. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. And if you don't know me, my name is Josh Holyfield. This is the Josh Holyfield podcast, and I have made the commitment to do these videos for you every single day. We talk about health, wealth, and relationships, and my overall goal is to help you become a better man. So if you feel like this video could help someone that you know, do me a favor and give it a share. Send it over to them and maybe it'll help. And if you enjoyed the content, I'll be back here tomorrow. Stay vigilant and we'll see you soon.